Okay, welcome to our party people to another episode of Psychonaut Sessions, your home for all things psycho. This is your host, Daniel Moeller, and I've made a promise to myself that Psychonaut Sessions isn't just going to be about uh, comics and cartoons and me going through shit like that. I want to talk about everything um, under the universe, film, uh, music, uh, spirit stuff, whatever. I hate, I don't know, I don't know a good word for it. Um, other than metaphysical, maybe that might be better, but I'm here today with author and psychonaut aficionado, an excellent friend of mine. We go way back, although we haven't seen each other because of COVID and shit for a long time, but author of Divine Magnetic, which you can find on Amazon, and I'll have a link in the description, and uh, working on so many other things right now, and we'll kind of get into that, but you can find him at at Isaac underscore Lynn underscore author on Instagram. How you doing? Good. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the kind intro and for having me on the show. Yeah. It's well, I wouldn't call it a show necessarily. Um, for my two viewers out there, it's, it's just me hanging out with people, man. Just me hanging out with people. Um, so I kind of want to get into, like we discussed earlier, um, a, a little bit about divine, divine Magnetic and what it is and what it's about. Um, and although I knew we were talking earlier, you feel a little bit removed from this book. Um, so let me, let me pace things back a little bit. Um, I love like spirituality and metaphysical things, but I don't. I don't like to come at it from any kind of like dogmatic approach or whatever. I come at it from more of like a kid who was really into like Dr. Strange and magic and stuff like that. And, um, uh, that that's kind of the angle that I usually come at it from, um, really exciting stuff. And I, I like to push the boundaries of consciousness, consciousness and reality, obviously, if you know me, um, and your book, again, even though you felt pretty far removed from it now because it's been a few years since it's been out um really hit on a lot of angles for me in terms of it's it covers a lot of topics that you might see in um a modern spiritual book or even a new age book or unity or something like that but it still comes at it from this like really practical approach um this really even keel um, even though you're kind of like all over the place and you cover a ton of shit, um, it's not uh, hoity-toity. It's not woo- woo-woo. If Does that resonate with you? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was supposed to be a bit of a humorous uh, run through um, metaphysics that I had been looking into for, you know, ever since... I was a teenager and everything like that too and trying to deconstruct the what is what is in the um what's in spirituality that makes sense and and is there anything that uh, that is salvageable and all that you know but not dogma yeah it's like you're trying to kind of come up with your own like to me the term divine magnetic um which you actually define pretty well at the beginning of what, chapter four you don't have you don't have page numbers so that was my only crit- critique of the book <laughs> but <laughs> but my buddy aaron conway he, his books have no page numbers too and it's like ah I'll get page numbers in there um but still excellent works uh you called divine magnetic um as like the principle of a vast field of harmoniously existing energies and potentials which dictates the nature of how we connect to the cosmos so it's like you were trying to uncover what you consider sort of the universal law behind all of this phenomenon for yourself is that is that accurate well it's the, my background uh you know i've been a spiritual person uh, for a long time i got into like uh, psychic powers and stuff like that when i was a preteen probably and uh, my mom was a real spiritualist although a catholic but she was into metaphysics and eventually 
also uh, got into the unity Christian type of thing. And um, so we had a lot of talks about that and that kind of developed my uh, wanting to understand that kind of thing. Um, but I'm also a sci-fi nerd and uh, and got into um, sciencey type stuff and uh, you know you you hear a lot about the magic aspects of quantum physics which physicists pretty much say is is not a thing but uh, uh, there are you know these people these physicists who say that you know, it, that kind of thing is impossible to understand quantum physics. No one really understands it. Some, I don't know if it was, um, right. Well, one, some, some physicists said that, but, um, so the divine magnetic book really, um, was trying to figure out the, something that is more, uh, concrete, like a real, a real explanation of the unified field of the universe and um, what it what it could be and things like that. So I'm not, I'm not really trying to create my own thing, but uh, trying to figure it out and figure out how it uh, uh, connects to spirituality and, and um, because there's a lot of ancient um, lines of thinking that that are kind of in line with uh, some of the things of uh, that quantum physics kind of uh, talked about, like the non-local aspect of it, and and things being able to communicate across vast distances and and uh, the whole <clears throat> the whole universal field that that pervades uh, the universe and inside of us also so we're all connected to it and so there's there's some people that I, I eventually got in into their works that were kind of delved into this and you know they there are scientists that are not uh, accepted by the mainstream field of science and inventors that invent things that that um, can't be explained so they're just explained to be n not real or impossible and and so you start going down a, a rabbit hole if you really look into that stuff and, and believe any of it. And so there was a guy named Tom Bearden who um, described uh, a kind of like a universal field and uh, how it could explain a lot of the unknown aspects of physics and how some of these inventions that are say uh, um, perpetual motion machines and stuff like that work and um, I, I looked in looked into his work and a, and a guy named Paul Leva, Paul Laviolette who uh, did a he did a, a book that I didn't actually read, but saw him uh, describe it uh, enough that I got a good understanding of it. Of, uh, he called it cosmogenesis, and it was basically how the uh, the ancient teachings were very uh, similar to this um, universal field and stuff like that. So it was pretty vague and everything, but it's kind of the background of it. Yeah. Like students of Tesla is what I like to call those kind oh, of yeah. scientists. 
<laughs> nowadays because it seemed like Tesla had that all kind of, or at least was on the path of figuring it all out before he was screwed by uh, um, his peers and JP Morgan is the right, the, right, the rumor. Yeah, no, yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, it's there's that there's that tone in the book like you are searching like a science nerd um in that respect but there's also you don't get too high level you don't get too up here you you always seem to find a way to kind of tie that back down to um you know the basics of like being a human on this planet and that's what i appreciated about your book because the the thing that i hate i i hate i was like should i use that word but i i i hate spirit what what i call spiritual bypassing which is people who lean on you know new age concepts and um oh quantum physics is magic and stuff like that as the way of kind of escaping and and pulling themselves away from being human. Um, and, and if I'm like off base, like totally let me know, like we can like have at it in the, uh, on this conversation, that would be awesome. Um, but it really reminded me of, um, I don't know if you've ever taken a, a look at the work of uh, Jed McKenna. Um, Jed McKenna wrote it, he's he's kind of an anonymous author in the sense that um, he's kind of like Thomas Pynchon, where nobody really knows who he is. Um, he's kept his life very, 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 very private. Um, so if you do internet searches, whatever, there's no pictures, there's no background. Nobody really knows where this guy has come from. But he wrote three books. Um, and the first one's called Spiritual Enlightenment, The Damnedest Thing. And I can't remember. I think the second one's called Spiritually Incorrect Enlightenment. <laughs> and I can't remember the third one. But it's very much, um, it's not what you would expect. And because you refer to enlightenment a couple of times you know well a couple of times you refer to enlightenment in your in your book and i don't know where you're at now so we can kind of talk about that but it, fully it, enlightened. <laughs> yeah. well it kind of it reminds me of jed mckenna's sort of view of enlightenment that it's not necessarily this like oh thing but it's more of a it, it's just a mode of evolution it's a mode of of uh where of of honoring and recognizing where our consciousness as a humanity has been where it's at now and and pushing ourselves beyond the threshold to something new and, and better and greater and that that doesn't have to look like nirvana and it doesn't have to look like ascension into the star realms or whatnot because you have some like really basic ethical things in this book too about um well i can't find it right now and i didn't put that in my notes this is just where the conversation's going but um you know um integrity honesty you know um like stuff like that and and working through modes and aspects like that and that's kind of where jed mckenna was at of like uh, on relinquishing ourselves of this like supernatural notion as to what enlightenment is and bringing us down to just like what it is to me to be human yeah i mean fully appreciate that i i mean i think the if you think about how they just describe matter itself it's it's already supernatural i mean this is where some of this the spiritualists have pissed you off but uh, like because because there's no there's nothing that's that's solid in matter but it's all you know it's there's all the atoms full of space and everything like that 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 doesn't mean there's nothing solid because the, the solidity comes from the movement and 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 uh the the meeting of of different forces and and them spinning around each other and things like that but if you really think 
about that. I mean, it's it's mind boggling. And the fact that we are made of that is is <clears throat> pretty interesting. Yeah, you know, we're we're made of some these tiny little things and we're like these massive giants uh, made of things that we could never even really hope to see because of the nature of light. But. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's fucking crazy. I remember um, learning something about the atomic. It was in class. I remember I was in class. It was like sixth grade or something, and we were getting into atoms and stuff. And of course, in, a, in that sixth grade, it's like really basic and stuff. But and they're just like, OK, atoms, this and that. But I remember getting into a questioning with my teacher about but but that like what you're talking about means that this stuff is always like moving all the time. And if like we're made of these things, that means like we're always moving all the time, even when we're still. And he was just like, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's kind of cool, but it blew my fucking mind apart. I just, I like it meant, cause I clarified with him. It meant that like this table is not ever really solid in the sense that we understand it as being solid. There's like movement happening all the time, everywhere. And then I, it kind of like that blew it up into, so I was a really troubled young kid. I didn't <laughs> sleep much, but I would, you know, I, that was like around the time I know that for myself, I was starting to stay up nights and I was not able to sleep because my mind just kept thinking about the nature of the universe and the nature of God and all this stuff. And, um, the fact that we're never like even, cause it was around that time that we were learning about planets too. And we did, I know we did an astronomy course. Sixth grade was a very transitory year for me. Um, but understanding that like, so we're always moving too. the earth is always spinning and where the whole solar system is always moving away. Like we're actually never ever in the same place as where we were a second ago ever. Like we never will go back there. Like in the, in that location in space and time. And it it, it blew my fucking mind apart. Do what? I just said totes my goats. Oh, yeah. 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 It's, I, um, I, yeah, um, yeah, I mean, you could really, you could think about that forever, but, uh, ultimately it is just, it's not going <laughs> to help us that much. Like, yeah. uh, like the nature of, you know, quantum physics, it's like, yeah, that's all taking place, but doesn't mean anything. Like one of the things with with the perpetual motion devices is inside of a, a cubic centimeter of of space. There's more energy than this is. At least some scientists said this. There's more energy than all the visible matter of the universe. So the problem is, is that it's it's not usable in right. any way that we figured out how to use it. Right, because it it's constantly uh, canceling itself out. It's basically in a kind of equilibrium, and uh, that the only things that aren't in that equilibrium are is matter and and light, and so that's that's you know that's in the divine magnet. If you can you can find that. Yeah, page, ladies and gentlemen, page infinity. Can, there's no you can find. There's no page numbers. So. Yeah, page to find, infinity. You have to search through the whole book to find. <laughs> That's how you lure people in, man. <laughs> That's how you lure people in. Um, well, again, yeah. I mean, a lot of these concepts are in there, but as you get through the book and especially the last few chapters, it's like, okay, you you really start getting into this space of um how does all this shit really apply to me and my actions as a human and, blah, 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 blah. And, and not that like you're answering all the like you're directly relating all this stuff it's like you just kind of hone the reader down um into this space and one of the one of the things i was like really interested in is you talk about like freedom as a huge you even you even you know, mention it as a double-edged 
double-edged sword. And that's actually a book by occultist um, Jack Parsons that you should check out if you haven't checked. It's actually, actually, it's pretty rare, but it's called Freedom is a Two-Edged Sword. And it's like, it's like a spiritual libertarianism. It's really cool. I actually have a copy if you want to borrow it sometime. And um, gurus, you talk about the paradox of the guru. And, um, and uh, I mean, this, I've, I've been, you know, I was reviewing this um, from whenever I first read it recently and it like really hit home for me um, of just like that idea of like the teacher and the, um, the guru as like, you know, you, 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 you say that, um, like really you should make this like sort of dynamic in your life optional, um, which I really appreciated because, um, there, there is a danger in, in, in putting someone in a place of authority over like your own experience. Yeah, especially now because we have so much information available to us. You know, you can you can not only get all the information that that a monk would have killed for. Now you can you know take a pill that'll you know send you to <laughs> across space too. So uh, why you exactly need a guru uh, like a a spiritual teacher of course we can't do anything alone anyway so you need you need mentors and that's that's a, a truism and yeah but being a mentor is probably a fun thing but there's a, a real danger of of becoming corrupt as as somebody who has authority yeah. over anybody and and the word guru is, I think, part of the paradox idea is that the word guru is is like a god, is like a grand being, like the word genie or something like that. It's not just a genie in a bottle, but it's it's the whole universe. Mm -hmm. And so that's ultimately probably the the mind, the transcendent part of the mind. I mean, there's there may be no way to separate our some part of our mind from the whole universe and i mean that's i'm still trying to prove that one scientifically but yeah well, good luck <laughs> I, I mean isn't that like that's where you end up getting to though is that like really we should it's like the whole idea of not what namaste really means it's like everybody like you should like the life in every person but just life in general your experience as the guru is the teacher like not any one sole person like really should be in that position that you have that has to be your mediation point between you and the divine or god or enlightenment whatever the fuck it is you're trying to seek but um like everybody and everything just which that communicates to me is just like life in general is just that like you should recognize the teacher and all of that i mean well, you're, that's your words you said i mean i'm paraphrasing probably i don't think you said the word i don't I think you cursed <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um yeah. i mean that's definitely true i mean unfortunately people are people got the trauma brain and so we're not we're not perfect beings so not only that we have the uh we have a seek system inside our brain which you know runs on dopamine and so we're always seeking uh, and when you get into like being a spiritual seeker like if you've probably seen fight club how like the uh the love interest was <laughs> I was totally into uh, like just going to every every workshop she could find and, and you see people that 
well, you may, if you pay attention to these spiritual teachers, they'll, they'll have uh, people that go to every workshop they do. And it's like, at some point, they should get, the, they should get the message, but there's, there's a dopamine hit uh, yeah. from the meeting and there's a dopamine hit from the uh, finding the next meeting and all that. So I mean, there's that, but then there's people, including myself, you know, we have problems from our past or whatever. So we're not always able to be our own you know, spiritual teacher. Yeah. But we can, I mean, I think I remember writing in that book somewhere that, that uh, no matter where you're at, you're probably above somebody else uh, in a, as a spiritual sense, or you probably have knowledge to give and you probably also could use some knowledge. So there's always a, a somebody yeah. to teach and somebody to learn from. I think that one thing that um, all spiritual communities can benefit from, whether oh, it's like, that, our, that, hey, that? Um, something that, that um, I think everybody could benefit from is that whether you're Christian, whether you are Muslim, whether you are New Age or whatever, um, there is no there is no actual hierarchy right there we have this assumed hierarchy that there is like this level of attainment that we're trying to reach but wh where is that what like what is it like is that written down somewhere in the cosmos because it's like i mean it's maybe assumed in some of the books that we've read that have been written by humans but and so even when you say that you're kind of better off than someone else in a certain extent, it's like, well, like who in comparison to what and in who and like where, like wisdom is a miasma of information that people just gather however they gather. And um, I, I hope, I hope we can like get to this place in humanity where there there's not the hierarchical system of knowledge and attainment and wisdom that is in any kind of spiritual community because i've autumn and i have faced that ourselves and we've encountered that ourselves um of of, of people that don't even claim to be gurus in any way shape or form but they definitely put themselves in the position as one you know and however they don't like you know want to do that however unassuming they try to be and humble they try to be about it it's really hard for people is he saying guru is he saying guru it sounds like he said guru i'm a guru he fully he fully knows what's going on in this conversation without the headphones that's right because he's psychic there you go i think uh, one of the things that I'm I'm working on now in my uh, what I've been working on for the last few months is um, you know how how to kind of parse that this idea out and uh, I, I think it has a lot to do with just the uh, the ideal what what is your ideal in whatever whatever your goal is there's going to be an ideal that has attained it and i mean if you're in a yoga class then there's somebody who knows all the yoga moves that's probably going to help so they're an authority on that that doesn't mean they're authority on you know how to be a better defensive driver or something like that they're not they don't have every bit of wisdom uh, mm -hmm. but like yeah we still need to honor expertise yeah i mean that's that's where where real authority comes from is is your ability to 
to do something well to bring value to people and all that in that field of study most likely because no one's no one's going to be the all around uh, perfect like like me no i mean like you apparently no. <laughs> like I, you I brother like you i know so you I and i were talking about a secular approach to transcendence so what what is your latest works and what is it that what's this idea what's the up down <laughs> the secular spirituality so yeah. the the yes no what the fuck does uh, that mean uh well obviously that's a that is kind of a contradiction in terms so it, it's the secular approach to transcendence and um it's pretty much it seems like a continuation of the divine magnetic because i think i was trying to do the same thing in that book probably didn't succeed but but it had a different uh kind of theme i'm not trying to explain uh, any kind of universal physics in this one maybe but uh, i probably can't help myself but <laughs> So the, it's it, it's kind of looking at uh, psychology and and mythology and and um, trying to figure out what um, what if anything uh, we can use in from spiritual teachings to lead better lives and. Uh, one of the one of the things that has inspired me in it is the Pachacuti Mesa because it's um it's got this design basically and I could be wrong in because I didn't go very far in the Pachacuti Mesa, but uh yeah you've got these you've got these four uh elements surrounding the uh the center element and um, that you know the the i don't know if it, it's the some of the the shamans were kind of looking at it as a cross i'm not sure but but um, there's an idea that the cross is the the world tree mm -hmm. and and the the cross is it, the world tree is actually the person and so the cross is the person and uh, so we have these uh, uh, these four elements. And when I was looking at the uh, the Book of Revelations, just so happens that there's four horsemen of the apocalypse, which seem to be the mishandling of the these four elements. Um, you know, you had the the four elements of Pachacuti Mesa. Um, that surrounded from what I understand were kind of like your uh your your body your mind your your work and your relationships um not sure if that's if that's accurate but that's what the map that I've thought would help uh with a secular approach to transcendence where you can kind of have these uh, these four areas of life that are important um your health your mind your your service and your relationships and then in the middle is an integration of uh, all of them where you kind of get to experience transcendence if you can integrate if you can basically optimize your uh your life then you can uh, experience uh transcendence which is basically uh, flow states and and ecstasy and uh, sexual um, ecstasy um, various other kind of transcendent states of mind um, but also uh, your 
your passion is you if you balance your life then you get to have this passion that is transcendent and um, so it's in simplest terms it's it's just a, a way to kind of optimize your life and experience spiritual states in that way and that's close enough to enlightenment for right joe six pack out there yeah but or even or even you know anybody so yeah that's like that's real that i mean that's a great understanding dude you need to check out the work of franz barden if you haven't already you know franz barden I haven't known any of the names you've you've mentioned yeah. so far. So I'm gonna, I, I, guys, another book I'm gonna have to touch away. So Franz Barden wrote a book called Initiation to Hermetics, and so Franz Barden's background is this: he was known as a great like a occultist and sorcerer um, at turn of the century Germany, and when Hitler came to power, um, the Nazi Party tried to recruit Franz Barden as part of their like black magic program like because hitler was all into occultism and the black arts and shit like that franz barden said no fuck you and they threw him in a concentration camp and so while he was in and i can't remember which camp it was but while he was in this concentration camp he developed a series of magical practices that basically helped him survive the camp and he put it all into this book because he finally got out of the camps. And and what's funny is that he ended up getting arrested by the Soviets later because they wanted to recruit him for his power and stuff too and threw him in a camp and he eventually died. But that's besides the point. Oof. But he, <laughs> yeah, not yeah, a great sell for the book. The, both those uh, groups really liked the powers of the mind. Right. Um, and his book, um initiation into hermetics is all about that in his he he says like, like so there's been these mystery schools throughout time and they've been very mysterious about their arts and they've kept them close and you know a lot of this has to do because of you know after the council of nicaea the church was just like attacking all of these mystery schools um from the platonic and neoplatonic era and and whatnot so a lot of these like esoteric practices had to remain hidden and that's why they've been so arcane over time and like rife with symbolism and stuff because it's all just been a code to kind of conceal themselves from persecution and shit anyway franz barden was very um upfront in that um this whole idea of the elements of like earth air fire and water what you're talking about with with the mesa with the Pachacuti Mesa and, and other like the Native American medicine wheel and stuff. It's all based upon the fact that these are just symbols of an aspect of who we are in our body, in our mind, in our emotions, whatever. And um, it's, it's all about understanding that and how they work around this matrix, as you say, of, of, transcendence of evolution of like you know when you harmonize these elements together when you harmonize these things like you have the ability to push yourself beyond the point of what you would normally consider humanly capable um so yeah man that's another i'm gonna i i think i i need to make a list of things to ship to you <laughs> because it's it's a really good book. His program is really intense, though. I mean, it gets to the point because I followed it for a little bit and it was very effective, very effective. But it just gets so intense that it's just like, I mean, you and I are both dads with, you know, jobs and like it just I don't have time for this shit. I can't. Like, it just gets to be too much. Um, but um, it's very effective, you know, for a little bit. And it kind of goes back to even like what you're saying, what you've talked about in divine magnetic, divine magnetic, which is like at a certain point, you, you know, if you want to, if you want to see results, you have to commit yourself a little bit. You have to commit yourself to some sort of practice, to some sort of, 
whatever it is, there's no one practice better than the other, but you have to, you have to get your, you, it, it's all, it's all based upon neurology, right? You have to get yourself into some kind of routine, just like if you're practicing the piano or, you know, for sports or whatever that you have, where you have to exercise those neural pathways and like push them beyond a certain point. So anyway, yeah. Secular, yeah, you got a secular approach to transcendence, man. Yeah. Yeah. You could, you could float around it all day, but you got to submit yourself to something. You, it doesn't really have to be all that, uh, woo woo at all you know it could now nowadays one of the things i've been uh, amazed at that i never noticed as a as a young person was all the interest in meditation and mind mindset mindfulness meditation uh now these days and and uh mindset and uh, kind of like manifestation type of thinking and stuff like that, that uh, people have been using like businessmen and stuff like that. Like you go to a some weird sales meeting and they're actually talking about using things that are like uh, what the mystics used to talk about. It was in the mystery yeah. schools and, and like Dale, was it? Not Dale Carnegie, but... Uh, Napoleon Hill and his think and grow rich type stuff. It, people have been using that kind of mindset training, which is, you know, pretty, pretty, uh, not only effective, but uh, intense and, and really kind of speaks to the nature of, of reality itself. Like part of, <clears throat> part of uh, what I've been interested in and, and learning about and researching for this uh, book on secular approach to transcendence is uh, like the nature of perception it, itself like uh, you it, it's way more true than we would ever expect that it is what we believe that actually makes reality then you know then uh it seems you know it's it doesn't seem like that at all but but uh you know they you, used to say you gotta walk in in faith and and uh faith the size of a, of a mustard seed and all that um but it's it's like an inherent property of of perceiving that you have to have a goal before you can even perceive something this is some if you've ever heard of a, a guy named jordan peterson mm -hmm. he uh, he was describing uh, this is basically proven in neuroscience that that uh what what your aim is, is what your aim, whatever you're aiming at will determine what you perceive. Like if you're, if you want to, <laughs> like the, if you're a chicken and you want to go across the road, then anything that doesn't have to do with that, you're not even, you're not even going to see it. Right. It's pretty much grounded out. And then what you're gonna see is anything that will help you and anything that will hurt you and that's basically how we not just we as humans but everything perceives mm -hmm. and you know it's it's pretty fascinating but so if you if you take that to a perhaps illog illogical conclusion that it kind of speaks to how your faith can actually create uh, the world you see. And that may 
explain how you know you can have answered prayers because it's it's what you uh, it's what you what you perceive is is reality and it's a little bit different for everybody but I, we don't we don't quite share the same reality yeah yeah well i agree in the sense that um whatever you want to define as prayer right um sorry i got some like weird sun going down stuff going on here i thought you changed your shirt on me I'm in was... <laughs> <laughs> um but of just uh at, you know at a certain point i was afraid to do certain things in my life and i was really um absorbed by fear and self-consciousness and insecurity and then as soon as i it, it's a long process as to how i finally turned the tide but my i uh, ultimately i just the focus was like for me for me that that soul alignment it was for me was comics something i always wanted to do and then as soon as i like i just made the decision that i'm like that's the other side of the road for me i'm gonna think of nothing but that and that's the goal and i just aligned my whole being to that all the elements right and since then it's just been magic 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 it's almost it not to at the risk of sounding like the fucking secret or something like it is like somehow the universe just starts opening shit up for you you know and i have to take this all with a grain of salt in the fact that i am a white guy in suburbia middle class you know i have a lot going for me privilege bra yeah i mean i got a lot going for me too already you know so um i take so it's this is not to assume that you can just tell people that oh well if you just focus in this direction you can just get it and whatnot um but there was definitely a time in my life where that wasn't going for me i was um not even living from paycheck to paycheck i was like completely absorbed in like mental health and physical health issues and um part of that was for it was a lot of things and part of it is some grounded realism too because i also know i can't it's really hard especially with kids to make a living doing comics nowadays so i had to find a job and a way to have stability that wouldn't drain me and support my lifestyle and support what i want to do too and I just I have the energy for it. Some people have like are surprised when they find out that I have a full time job with a lot of the other creative stuff that I'm doing, and it's just because and and I have the energy for that because I just I've decided that it well it's decided I've decided to just go after what fucking makes my soul happy and to do that all day every day, and I don't need as much sleep. I don't need it's like that's the fuel. Mm -hmm. so you gotta pay the you gotta pay the piper because we got human needs or we got biological needs yeah i do yeah. i it, it is an interruption when i have to go to the bathroom and shit like that and eat and <laughs> like that's fucking annoying it's fucking annoying so yeah, you can why the up down well, dude what's what's the up down no, oh, that's just a reference to the contradiction of, <laughs> of uh, secularism and spirituality. Because you know, the definition of secularism is with no particular religion, I guess. So spirituality might still be able to exist in there, but it's it's not. I don't think it would be uh, wise to call a book a maybe secular religion. Now. But I have heard people say that, but I don't believe them. I think you should, <laughs> I think you should call this book the up down, you know, subtitle a secular approach to transcendence. And the up down. Yeah. <laughs> well noted. I was gonna call yeah. it uh actually something much more uh silly called spiritual rocket fuel. A oh, okay. secular approach to transcendence. Okay. Because uh because it's supposed to, it's supposed to be a way to uh 
to kind of get your life going. Like you're saying, I, there's a lot of people who talk about momentum in life. And uh, like how, how to get that going and, and is it possible like when you when you get uh, into a, a position of of authority or something like that you get more opportunities and so that seems like there's momentum in your activity and stuff like that and uh, so you know that's interesting what, what but could there be something more fundamental to it and I, I think I think there is like with this is my theory on it, which I didn't base on my I'm thinking but I, I saw this guy um, talking about this guy named Dan Winter who's a um, he's he works with plasma and uh, uses plasma to do healing technology and stuff like that but he talks about the vortex nature of of uh, plasma and and uh, there, there's been some people have described that uh, and actually an atom is actually a, a little vortex and that it's a spinning thing anyway so got to have this basis before you can just apply it to a, a philosophy of life mm -hmm. anyway so you get you get these four elements on the Pachacuti Mesa or the elements of your life aligned and then all of a sudden they flow together and they start to create a uh, an integrated uh, kind of power you know and, and a, a vortex has um, has a has two you know it goes it flows it goes down but then there's also a, a force that comes up to to give it shape and and the divine magnetic that's kind of talking about how there's a force called entropy which most people have heard about and then and, and that's kind of governs the visible universe but then there's a force called negative entropy or neg entropy which mo almost no one's heard of uh and it, it's myself coming. included i haven't heard of that yeah i mean i learned learned that from uh Tom Bearden. I don't know if he if he coined the term, but but um, so basically, you know, to go in, into it even farther, the the theory of that is that uh, there's there's a, a a force from negative entropy that actually orders the world, and then. Uh, entropy is disordering the world and and they are in balance to some degree i mean except for what you see but uh so as it could apply to uh transcendence in your life and using uh, the patchacuti mesa type of a framework or i keep on saying that because it's something you know but but uh, i'm I've, uh, I think I'm, I'm trying to call it maybe the attention cross or, or the devotional cross because it's it's these things that you pay attention to in your life to, mm -hmm. and uh, or what you devote your life to, and um, so it, you get you get them working together, and then all of a sudden, from up from the, from the level of, say ether or the non-visible, non-detectable level of the universe, assuming there is one, the, there's uh, interesting things that happen and and uh, gifts and say grace to use a, a religious term or uh, uh, momentum in life. Yeah, hell yeah. Dude, you got to look into the uh, Chicana um, from the Peruvian tradition as well. It's that type of cross that you're talking about. I'll send you some information on it. Well, so when's this book going to be out, man? 
could be a while. <laughs> <laughs> you ever want to? Um, I, I get it that you can't ever put a timetable on these things. You ever I mean, want an endorsement? You fucking send that first draft to me. Okay. Well, oh, appreciate it. Isaac, yeah, a... thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to have you on again sometime, especially whenever, yes, Spiritual Walk of Fuel or the Up Down <coughs> is out in stores. <laughs> um, and we can talk yeah. about that a little bit more deeply. Um, but in the meantime, Everybody go find Isaac um, on Instagram. So he's usually posting pretty regularly. And, you know, it's that's one of those that's one of those Instagrams that I go to every morning to just be like, OK, I got to get some of my own fuel. Um, so some good shit that you're posting on there. So go check them out. Um, See, rocket fuel, bro. rocket fuel uh, It's my coffee, it's my spiritual coffee in the morning. Um, so check him on Instagram as well as um, you can get his information and get his book, Divine Magnetic, um, in the description. Um, and then I'll have uh, links to my own shit. Any final words, sir? Just uh, thankful. It's been fun and love you, brother. Yeah, love you too, brother. All right, cool. Everybody out there, keep it psycho. Later. <laughs>